Influence is this. Influence is is is, is um, if you get around something or someone, and maybe that's not your you're not, maybe that's not something that you're doing over, like every day, or maybe it's something that is in your nature, or maybe it's not in your nature. Because Holy Spirit influences you in a way, you know, in, in many ways He influences you, but what He influences you is true about you. You see? Like, let's say, for example, like if He influences you, if he, if he influences you to love people, well, that's not far from who you are. That's not, that is exactly who you are. You are love. So it's not you. It's not you. Cannot manipulate. He would not manipulate you because that's who you are. But if you're feeling fear, doubt, and unbelief, that is not your nature at all. There's no fear in you. There's no unbelief in you. There is no. But yet, if I can make you think that those things are in you, or that you are those things, then your mind and your spirit is powerful enough that you're gonna feel all the symptoms of fear, all the symptoms of unbelief. All the symptoms of sickness. All this, all this, the way cancer was created was like that. Cancer was created like that. AIDS was, was created like that. Every STD was created like that. Everything was created like that. An idea was introduced. A lie was introduced. Someone believed it. Or a group of people believed it. And bah, now we have a new disease. And every year we have new crap coming up. New crap. New diseases. Doctor don't even know what to name them anymore. They don't know. They just make up crap. Like words for them, you know. And once they, once somebody makes up a word for it, then now it has like a, now it becomes a, uh, um, a mainstream idea, a mainstream idea. Nobody knows about it, and now all of a sudden they're really talking about it. It becomes a mainstream idea. So now maybe when it was discovered, it was discovered in China, and only people in China were having it. But now that it became a mainstream idea, and people heard about it in America, now people in America are getting it too. Now people in Africa are getting it too. You see what I'm saying? You know, about about eight years ago, Angela and I decided, you know what, we're not going to agree with the flu season. Everyone says the flu season, even the reporters are talking about the flu season, the doctors, the medical professionals, the pharmaceutical companies, the commercials, are all saying the flu season's coming, flu season, you got to give, you got to do this, you got to do that. We're like, no, forget it. We're, we're not going to agree with this, we're not going to take any shots, we're not going to put any nothing into this, because our bodies are strong, our bodies are healthy, our immune system's healthy. We have not had flu in three years. That's what's up. We're not going to. Imagine if you decide for every other line, in every other, in every other area, to uh, the same attitude, the same decision, yeah. you will have the same, the same benefits and the same results and the same life of God manifested in that area too. And that's what, sometimes, like, we're awakened in areas and we're not awakened in certain areas. Right. Sometimes we believe God for certain things and don't believe God for certain things because you can have different shade, different filters, different shades. And honestly, I think it's as easy as asking the Holy Spirit questions. Like, Holy Spirit, am I believing a lot? Tell me, you know, and it's not, the fact, the thing is not about going through the list of the lives that you're living. It's about being a, becoming so familiar with the truth that, that every lie that contradicts that, tr that truth automatically, you're like, no, you reject it completely. Kind of like, you get to know what a, a real $100 bill looks like, mm -hmm. or real gold looks like. doesn't matter if, if, if they have 100 variations of fake dollar bills, as you know all 100 variations of the fake $100 bills are fake because of that one dollar bill that you sell, oh, $100 bill that you find, that you study so well that you know that it's it real. So, hanging out with a person, the truth is a person, it's not doctrine, it's not things that you can actually teach, it's, it's the person. So, hanging out with a person, you know, I can, I can hang out with you for a week, for a month, whatever, and get to know you so much that if somebody out, somebody and somewhere else tells me, oh, now she did this, or she said this about you, or she did this, or she's that, or she's this. I'd be like, nah, that's not what she is. I don't believe that. She wouldn't do that. I know her so much, she wouldn't do that. She wouldn't say that. You know, you're getting, your perception of her is wrong. That's not what she is. Because I know you. And that's and the fact is that people don't know God that way. They don't know him that way. And they're like, still trying to 
learn about God through Christianity and through the Bible. Right. And the Bible is just one of the many instruments that God uses to reveal himself. One of the many. Because God will use a movie. God will use a dog. God will use a plant. God will use coffee. God will use whatever he... Whatever. But God's in everything. He will use anything to reveal himself. But if I only say God is in this, then I open myself to God revealing himself to me through this, but I close myself to all the other avenues. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can, you know what I'm saying? We cannot close ourselves to every other avenue that God wants to reveal himself to us. We need to, and like I said, I speak like this because I'm in a, in, a, in, a, in a Christian setting, but if I was with scientists, I would be using different words to say the same truth. If I was sticking to quantum physics people, I'd be using their lingo to express the same ideas, the same truth. And, and, and me saying it that way doesn't, it's the same thing. You can say God, you can say the Holy Spirit is energy, because that, that's, yeah. You can say that the, the, the molecules in the atom is the Holy Spirit, and God doesn't get offended. If you say that God is the atom, he doesn't get offended. If you say God is energy, he doesn't get offended. If you say that God is vibration, he doesn't get offended. If you say that God is, is uh, uh, light, he doesn't get offended. Well, obviously, the Bible says he's light. But, like, he doesn't get offended. Oh, no, you got to call me Jesus, you know? No, he doesn't get offended. And there's people that talk about light, and they talk about, there's people that talk about love, and they don't necessarily use the name of Jesus. And everything they're saying about love is true and is in the Bible. And yet, God is not offended because they're not calling him, because they're not saying Jesus. God is not insecure at all. But we, like, no, it has to be this way. They have to say Jesus, and when they pray, they have to pray in the name of Jesus, and la 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 Because if they don't pray in the name of Jesus, they don't give Jesus the credit, God always gives the credit. He always gives the credit. It's impossible for him not to get the credit. Even when he doesn't get it, he gets it. You know, because everything came from him, and everything's about him. Everything is, he's in everything. You know, so God always gives the credit. I don't have to defend God. I don't have to say glory to God. A lot of times people are like, glory to God, glory to God. And they're like, in, like in their hearts, are like, I'm so awesome, God, whatever, you know, put the spotlight on me, you know what I'm saying? And really, you know, and so you don't have to say it. it's an attitude of your heart. But even when people don't have that attitude in their hearts, or they don't know they have that attitude in their hearts, God's still getting, God, it's still, it came from God. You know, people get healed. If somebody uses, gets healed through smoothies, who created fruits? Who created smoothies? Who created blenders? Oh, man, did. No, God gave the idea, and then, you know, we did, you know. So, like, God still gets the credit, you know? It's like, you know what I mean? He always does. And, but we are so technical, we're like, man, it has to be this way, it has to look that way, and we miss the whole picture. God is not insecure. Jesus, in India right now, Jesus is appearing to Indian people. In Africa right now, he's appearing to African people. To Muslims, to a there is no Muslim. That's a lie. The, even Christians, there is no Christian. That's a lie too. You know, I mean, there's there's sons of God, but Christianity is not. Is we we created it the same way that the, the Mormonism was created by man. Like all this stuff, we keep on thinking, okay, those false religions, those false religions, they don't know God. Uh, okay, we can We maybe we, we might get closer to the truth, but still, there's a bunch of crap. In Christianity, because God was not about He was not about bringing Christianity. He was about bringing, manifesting the kingdom and manifesting the person of Jesus. So you'll find a Muslim or a, I don't know, a Hindu that works more in love than any Christian you ever meet. But like this Hindu guy works in love more than any Christian that I ever met in my life. How is this possible? If we have the truth, who says that we don't have a monopoly on the truth? We don't have a monopoly on God. God is everywhere. God belongs to everybody, and everybody belongs to God. So, I know, I know. Like, you cannot, like, I know it's like we grew up in a certain way throughout our lives, and then he, I know, like, I'm, like, maybe saying a bunch of stuff. They're like, man, that's challenging what I, my parents told me, and my pastor told me. And TBN told me, and maybe some yeah. interpretations that I got from the Bible, this guy around is kind of crazy. I get that. You know, you don't have, you don't have to take it or leave it. You, you just ask Holy Spirit if it's true or not. You know, but just don't, don't be just close to it because it's contrary to what you heard growing up. Because you might be, you might hear, you, you might 
grew up hearing a bunch of lies and crap. You never know. You know, if it's not like for real, like if it's not making God bigger, then it's crap. If it's making God bigger, if Jesus is so small that he only he is only with the Christians and only with the Christian Bible and only the Christian songs, then that's not really Jesus. You know, if it's big, big, Jesus is just big. And the devil is nothing, it's like insignificant nothing, then yeah, that's that's the gospel I like. That's the gospel I think is the true gospel. What is um when Jesus says nobody can come to the Father except through me, what does that mean? He's right. But then again, Jesus was is it, everything. Was it, was it mean coming through Jesus? What does it mean coming through? No one can come to the Father except through the Son. What does it mean of that? He says, and then he says also, nobody comes to me unless the Father draws them to me. And so what he meant is everything was created by Jesus, through Jesus, by Jesus, for Jesus. And, and, and the funny thing is that, like, I don't know how to explain it. I can only say it. When, God, when the Bible talks about Jesus, he's talking about you. He's talking about me. Because we're so one, it's not even funny, we're one. So everything the Bible says about Jesus is saying about you. But unless you understand oneness, then it becomes almost blasphemous for you to actually think that you and God are in the same rank. But you are. Because God, that's the way you were born. You know, the same way you're a son of God, Jesus is a son of God. So like, that's why you and God are, God can completely, fully manifest himself through you because you're just one with him. And you're just like him. So, Jesus, everything was made through Jesus. And God is in the apple. God is in the atmosphere. God is in the animals. God is in people. God is everywhere. They, no matter how people come to God, they came to Christ. No matter. No matter how people came to love, they came to God. doesn't really matter. We keep, on, then we keep on validating certain ways, and we keep on rejecting certain ways, because we are those Christian God. We said, this is the right way, and these other ways is not legal, it's illegal, it's not good, it's, and that's crap. God doesn't do that. God's like, you know, maybe somebody came, you know, maybe the way they came... They, they awakened to God was through medicine. Maybe the way they awakened to God was through philosophy. Maybe the, the way they awakened to God was through watching a cartoon. Maybe somebody, the way they awakened to God was through a friend or a dog. Like I have a friend of mine that, you know, I haven't talked to in years, but she was going to commit suicide, and she was like with a, she was with a knife and a, you know, something, a knife, and she was about to commit suicide. And her dog was um, knew about it. And came, was like, and came to her, she was on the floor with a knife, she was out to kill herself because something happened to her boyfriend, she was out to kill herself. And, and the dog came to her and was like, Ooh, started crying, and started like, Ooh, and knew there was something wrong. And the dog, she saw God through the dog, saving her, and she didn't kill herself, and she awakened to God right there at that moment, through the dog. You know, and there's, just like that, there's a billion stories like that of people that, that, that are waking to God through different things, through dogs, through this, through that. But we keep on saying, this is the way, this is the way. And that other way, that, those other ways, that's not God. That's witchcraft, that's this, that's new age. And that's where we miss it. Because if we, don't, if we just have the Christian garments, we're only going to see God in certain things, but not in everything. And so we live in ourselves, and we're limiting God, and we're limiting our experience here on the earth. And we're limiting what, we can, what can be manifest and expressed to us. Because we, we are choosing to see God only in certain things. We're being biased. It's like being biased, you know, and being uh, uh, selective. We can, be, you know, we can be so selective that we miss everything. We cannot be selective. We can be like, you know what? Reveal yourself to me to ho however you want. However you want. Like, however you want, through whoever you want, through a little kid, through a, a, a butterfly, through uh, the stars. Through whatever, you know, reveal yourself to me through sign, through uh, I don't know, watching uh, Jimmy Fallon or whoever. Oh yeah. Like, you don't matter. God will do it through anybody and through anything. But you have to be open. That's it. Just open. God cannot open you. Op you open yourself. Like you, you open your heart. You open your mind. God will not like open your heart. I'm gonna open your heart and your mind, whether you like it or not. <laughs> He doesn't do that. <laughs>
You know, you do it. You have free will to do that. You know, and God doesn't want it. If if it's control, God's not. He doesn't want it that way. He doesn't want robots. He doesn't want robots. He wants sons and daughters. He doesn't want robots. He doesn't want manipulate people. He loves people. So with that, I think I'm done. God bless you, people. Bye.